This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the first of the new format World Chalice Combo Tutorials. Now, I'm going to be going over all of the old simplified World Chalice Combos that I showed you, specifically the ones that included Digusto Emerald, which is now unfortunately banned. <laughs> Man down! Um, basically this card was a very good enabler for what the deck allowed you to have accessibility into because it allowed you to generate free resources and it kind of sucks that it is gone but it is very easy to mold your combos into plays that don't really require Digesto Emerald but specifically all the old Venus combos and the old Rescue Rabbit combos really benefited from Digesto Emerald because instead of using the cards that you summoned in the form of like your beckons and stuff like that your level 4s that you were summoning into Link monsters and playing very efficiently with them you would just make them into Digesto Emerald and reset your Shine Balls and then you'd get the same resources back but better because you drew a card you still had an Emerald on the board so you still had one card you threw into it and then you, uh, you just got extra resources from there so basically we do have to change the way we play so we can't get like those draw fours anymore but we are still capable of making Ningirsu into draw threes with simple two card interactions a very large amount of the time so I'm gonna be going over my previous World Chalice combos and updating them for the new format not including Digusto Emerald so that you guys have some understanding of how things have to change in terms of how this gets structured but this combo is going to be Venus and World, Leg World uh, Legacy World Chalice and it is going to be an Ingirsu draw three combo a plus five overall because you will end with four monsters on the board and then you will end with uh, with three additional cards drawn in your hand so let's just not waste any more time and let's just get straight into how this works so this does not require any other cards in your hand although if you do have other monsters and other world chalice monsters and obviously the combo gets more beneficial for you so from here if you just have these two cards to work with you're going to normal summon your agent of creation venus in the furthest away zone from wherever you're doing your link summoning i am right-handed i'm going to be using the right extra monster zone as indicated by this center field marker that i'm using if you're left-handed and you're going to be using the left-hand zone, then just reverse every card placement that I do and summon your Venus in the farthest right zone. But if you're using the right-hand zone, summon it far left, as I've done here. But So you're going to summon your Venus, and you're going to pay 1,500 life points to summon your three Mystical Shine Balls from your deck. And then from here, you're going to link with your Shine Ball into your first Link Summon into Imduk the World Chalice Dragon. Now, Imduk is going to grant you an additional Normal Summon for your World Chalice Monsters, so you're going to tribute one of your Mystical Shine Balls for the Tribute Summon of World Legacy World Chalice. And we're going to be doing this so that we can get its graveyard effect of when it was Tribute Summoned or set, and it goes to the graveyard, you can summon two World Chalice Monsters from your deck. So, what we're going to do is we're going to link with the Imduk in the World Legacy World Chalice as two World Chalice names, into Aurum, the World Chalice Blade Master. Now from here, if you had any other World Chalice names in your hand, you could definitely trigger Imduk to summon them from your hand. It's definitely beneficial for you in these combos, especially with Emerald gone, but it is still perfectly fine with just these two cards. So, World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger its effect to summon two cards out of your deck, and you're going to summon Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and Beckoned by the World Chalice. And then Lee's effect is going to add World Chalice Guard Dragon from your deck to your hand. In the previous combo sequence, uh, where we had Emerald, you'd be adding Beckoned here because you want to put it on the board, and then you want to, you know, make Digusto Emerald with it and stuff like that. But, we don't have that luxury anymore, unfortunately. But this card still facilitates a lot of resource for you because it is essentially two Link materials, being something you can either summon or send to the graveyard off Lee, and then it brings back a normal monster to one of your Link arrow-pointed zones. So it just it gives you extra resources to play with. So World Child's Guard Dragon has increased importance in a lot of these combos, which is fine. The deck was already well equipped to play these sorts of combos out. But anyway, carrying on, you're going to Link with Beckoned by the World Chalice and Lee the World Chalice Fairy, two different types and two different attributes, into Eeb the World Chalice Priestess in the center of your field so that you can start setting up for your Ningirsu play to be put right here. Now, what you have access to is you can just link away with the Agent of Creation Venus and the Mystical Shine Ball straight away into your Proxy Dragon in either of these two zones. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where it goes because it's about to go away anyway. And then what we're going to do is if you don't have any other World Chalice monsters in your hand, then what you're going to do specifically is you're going to use Lee's Graveyard Effect to discard the World Chalice Guard Dragon and then add it to your hand. And so this puts World Chalice uh, Guard Dragon into your grave so that you can then banish it and use its effect to revive either Beckoned or Mystical Shine Ball uh, into one of your Link Monster area zones. Now, I put Beckoned here, so Beckoned is just usually the safest put one to put back because in case things do change in terms of your plans in the game state, 
uh, then you can use Orum to like target it, whereas if you put Shine Ball there, that's not something you're able to do. So keep that in mind. But also, like, you have two options at this point. You can either link away with this into your Imduk, or you can use Orum to pop it and bring back your Imduk from Grave to conserve the Imduk from your extra deck. But I'm not too worried about that usually. I usually just blow through the Imduks anyway because there's no real reason to conserve them. If you're making plays, then you're never going to be using Imduk again, basically. Uh, so I'm going to link into Imduk, especially because I'd rather like conserve the Aurum for later in the combo sequences once you draw those three cards and once you have a lot more things that you can work around with, especially considering that Rescue Rabbit is now at three, and that's a pretty good extender to summon all Firewall Dragon, especially if you have a lot of fours left in your deck like Back End or if you're playing more vanillas like Chosen and things of that nature. But anyway... So from here, you're going to link into 3 with Proxy Dragon, treating it as a 2, and Mduk as a 1, into your Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. And then your Ningirsu is going to be Chain Link 1, and your Mduk is going to be Chain Link 2, to summon the Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, from your hand in defense position. And then your Ningirsu will fully resolve, drawing you 3 additional cards. So from here, you've turned 2 cards, Venus and World Legacy World Chalice, into 7. So it's a plus 5, a real plus 5. All of these cards are completely usable. Uh, going forward into your turn structure, uh, you have the Aurum, you have these three other cards, and you have these three in your hand. So four on field, three in hand, seven cards, minus the two that you started with being Venus and World Legacy World Chalice. That is a plus five, because you ended up with five more cards. All sorts of stuff, manners, and nonsenses. But so this is very expandable from this point on, so this is going to be the ending point of where I show you, because getting you to the Ningirsu is very much a very varied process in terms of where it goes after the Ningirsu, because you draw three cards. You have a lot of variables that can go into these things uh, going from this point onward. But it's very easy for you to make a Firewall Dragon here. Uh, if you had other World Chalice monsters in your hand, the Ningirsu will summon them to this zone. Orum is unused, so Orum can pop that card, bring back your Ningirsu. Uh, you, you can have basically very, uh, very well constructed firewall dragon plays going into your uh, next combo sequencing, especially considering that, like I said, Rescue Rabbit's at three now, uh, and you can also play Rescue Ferret if you want to to just go along with it. And basically, those are very good extenders. Uh, for this deck in particular. Rescue Rabbit being more of a starter and extender than just a regular extender, but still, it's still very good to summon out of your hand off a of Firewall Dragon because it does contribute to your combos, especially if it is live to summon Vanillas from your deck. Uh, so there is that as well. But I'm going to expand upon this. I'm going to rewind real quick, and I'm going to show you what you can do if you have literally any other World Chalice name in your hand and how you can change it up to conserve your resources for a better play that you could work with. Alright, so the expanded version of the combo that I'm about to show you, it's very simple requirement-wise. All you need is the Agent of Creation Venus, World Legacy World Chalice, and then literally any World Chalice named card in your deck. Um, it can be another copy of World Legacy World Chalice, it can be a Vanilla, it can be World Chalice Guard Dragon, it can be Lee, it can be literally anything. It does not matter. Uh, everything causes variables to shift because of Lee's effect to search, all that stuff. You're able to hand correct and do all that sort of stuff regardless of what the card is. And so... One of the worst cards for it to be is World Legacy World Chalice, so I'm going to show you what it is if you're playing it as World Legacy World Chalice being a duplicate in your hand. But anyway, so this combo starts the same way as the last one. You summon Venus in the furthest away zone from where you're going to be doing your Link Summoning, and then you pay 1500 to summon your three Shine Balls from deck, and then you're going to Link Summon away into your Imduk the World Chalice Dragon, and then it is going to get in you an additional uh, Normal Summon to tribute your Mystical Shine Ball to Tribute Summon the World Legacy World Chalice. Now here is where it's important that it's this this combo gives you a lot of additional security over the previous combo because of the fact that you had another World Chalice name in your hand. Specifically at the point where you're summoning this Aurum here using the Imduk and the World Legacy World Chalice. Now what you're going to do here is because you have a World Chalice name in your hand, you're able to make World Legacy World Chalice Chain Link 1 and Imduk World Chalice Dragon Chain Link 2 to summon a World Chalice card out of your hand no matter what it is. So that's actually very beneficial for you and it makes this combo very secure because what it allows is it allows your opponent not to be able to Ash Blossom your World Legacy World Chalice. If it's just activating by itself, they can Ash Blossom it and that sucks for you. It pretty much ends almost all of your plays that you could be doing, at least in the form of like going into Ningirsu. You're definitely not going to be going into Ningirsu anytime soon if your opponent Ash Blossoms this in this combo sequence. Uh, but with Imduk being Chain Link 2 on top of the World Legacy World Chalice, uh, it masks it from Ash Blossom. It means your opponent can't directly respond to it, so they can't Ash Blossom it. So, it's really good and really secure for this entire combo sequence. But So, Imduk will summon whatever World Chalice you had in your hand into any zone. It doesn't actually matter. And then, your World Legacy World Chalice will summon 
two World Chalices from your deck. Now, the key point here is that at this point, you want to summon a World Chalice Vanilla from your deck, and you want to have Lee being summoned onto the field. So it doesn't matter where they came from. If you summoned a Vanilla from your hand, then you want to summon Lee and, like, just another card out of your deck. If you had Lee that's being summoned from your hand, you want to, you know, summon Vanilla and other things. So, like, there's, it's, it should be pretty easy to figure out. But basically, at this point, you want to have a Vanilla on the field, at least one that is a World Chalice name, and you want to be summoning Lee and triggering its effect. And so, Lee will search for World Chalice Guard Dragon in this instance, uh, and basically, you're going to be melding your board from here. Now, this combo is very secure on the World Legacy World Chalice and the Ningirsu because you're able to mask both of them from Ash Blossom, and it also keeps your resources loaded in the grave for post when you're doing the Ningirsu play, so it's actually really good for you overall. But so, carrying on, depending on what your cards were, you have to link with different things into different uh, stuff, but in this instance, you're going to link with the World Legacy World Chalice and the Lee into Ebe the World Chalice Priestess, and then from here, you're going to link with Venus and a Shine Ball into the Proxy Dragon in any zone, really. It doesn't matter. And then from here, you're going to link with the Beckoned, or whatever vanilla is left on your field. Um, if you if you were summoning different things, then you can just leave the Shine Ball out and use it to make the Imduk that you were making here. Uh, it's very flexible for you at this point. Uh, but this is what I was talking about, about how I don't like to get into super specific detail for these combos, because a lot of variables start popping up their ugly heads into the mix, but... I digress. So from here, you have your Lee loaded in grave, and you have this Guard Dragon in your hand, or if you summon Guard Dragon, it's in your graveyard, whatever. You have another World Chalice in your hand, whatever you search with Lee. In this instance, it just happens to be Guard Dragon. Now, because we had that extra World Chalice name in our hand that started the combo, and it put an extra card on our board, we don't have to waste the Guard Dragon or the Lee's effects here when we're going into Ningirsu. So we'll just go into Ningirsu. Straight away, Ningirsu will be Chain Link 1, and Imduk will be Chain Link 2, yet again, to mask the Ningirsu from Ash Blossom, which is great. Um, if you have Guard Dragon in your hand as well, it also does a little bit more secure things for you, because what it allows is it allows for, um, if your opponent is playing like something like a Feg Veiler, and they Veiler the Ningirsu, uh, then like you're able to just discard this as Chain Link 4. <laughs> if it's Chain Link 3 Veiler on Ningirsu, you can just discard the Guard Dragon to negate the Veiler, because it's a card that targets. Um, so, like, there's that as well. There's all these little niche things that pop up that's really cool in gameplay. But, so, in this instance, Chainlink 1 in Gearsu, Chainlink 2 Imduk. Imduk will summon your World Chalice Guard Dragon on Chainlink 2. Then in Gearsu will resolve at Chainlink 1, drawing three additional cards. So, you end up with less cards overall. You still end up with seven cards, but you started with three cards instead of two in this combo sequence. But it's still fine because you actually just get to do so many things going forward because you have this World Chalice Guard Dragon that is still very much a resource um, going forward. It's still like a plus one when you link with it. And then you have the Lee's Effect Engrave that can put itself back in your hand. Like You essentially have two resources that are going unused in this combo sequence versus the previous combo sequence. So even though this one's only a plus four, you are utilizing this card to gain you an additional plus, so it does put you back up to a plus five. It's just not an immediate resource. Uh, but then you also have the Lee that does the same sort of thing, but this combo is actually expandable from here And so just to show you a little bit of what you can be doing you can link with the Ningirsu and the world uh, Chalice guard dragon into your firewall dragon here If you have a world chalice in your hand to summon then you can easily trigger Ningirsu to summon your card here But even if you don't you can go world chalice guard dragon since it's unused and you can summon the Beckoned by the World Chalice in this zone. And that's why it was important that you summon a World Chalice Vanilla, because Orem is unused, and it has to target World Chalice monsters to tribute them. So you'll use Orem's effect here, and you'll tribute the Beckoned by the World Chalice, and you will bring back an Ingirsu or Proxy Dragon next to the Firewall. So now all of a sudden you have a Firewall Dragon that is co-linked with two cards, and from here you're able to do just a lot of different things uh, for like freeform combo structuring because you can use firewall dragons effect just to add two cards like a world legacy world chalice and uh, a beckon from your grave to your hand and then you have firewall dragons ability on top of whatever three cards you drew plus the other two cards that were already in your starting hand like you have so much free combo potentiality and free combo molding that it becomes really specific and very variable uh, in terms of like what cards are where and what cards are doing what and so that's kind of where I can only take this so far as far as showing you guys what you can be doing but these plays are still completely fine without Digusto Emerald and there are definitely substitutes for Emerald out there one of which is just changing the combo sequences around but then another one of the combos does involve things like Exodius the Ultimate Forbidden Lord and things like that there's definitely replacements for Emerald out there 
one of which is proper play structuring, which is great because that means there's no additional cards that have to be played. But then the other thing that changes is you can actually just play other cards that are also functionable combo pieces like Exodius and things like that. So things to consider for future combo tutorials. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Like this video if you want to see more World Chalice combo tutorials and World Chalice videos in general. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you like my content and you want to support my ability to create content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as the reward tiers get you access into contest giveaways and other rewards like my Discord server access, stuff like that. So if you're interested in any of that, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on Patreon. And it would really help a lot if you're able to support the channel and help me grow my content with the support that you could give. But other than that, special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yugi Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may understand or know in terms of keeping this ship afloat, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.